All right, in 3.7, we're going to talk about modeling using variation. We're going to solve direct variation problems, inverse variation problems, combined variation problems, and uh, solve problems involving joint variation. So let's see if we can't look at it. We're going to look at the different types. One thing we do need to know about variation, all of our variation problems have a K. Uh, this is basically the constant uh, or uh, the const constant variation or constant proportionality. And what you need to know is that uh, this K Okay, will be located in the numerator multiplied by anything else also. numerator. So can I keep that in mind? Uh, K will be always will be located in the numerator and it'll be multiplied by anything else also in the numerator. So uh, it's important to know because every single one of our problems will have a K. And most of the problems we're going to have to do, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find K and then use K to help us predict in the future. So kind of keep that in mind. We did some of this stuff when we were doing um, our exponential and logarithmic equations, especially the exponential ones. Moving along, uh, we have a nice little direct variation. Uh, what direct variation means is if, if something goes up, then the other thing goes up. So for instance, uh, a good little example is, um, let's see, uh, the more you work out, the more calories you burn. So as one increases, the other one increases also. So the way we write that, we'll say y uh, varies directly. If something varies directly, it'll go in the numerator on the other side of the equation. All of our equations have a nice little k, so you can see uh, to write this formula, y varies directly as x, will be y is equal to kx. k always goes in the numerator. If something varies directly, it will go in the numerator on the other side of the equation. So that's direct variation. This one says y varies inversely uh, as z. So if there's an inverse variation, as one increases, the other one's going to decrease. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, and the way it works is k will be in our numerator. If there's an inverse variation, then what varies inversely will be in the denominator on the other side of the equation. So direct variation, numerator, inverse variation will be in the denominator. And remember, k is always located in our numerator in all of our variation problems. Next, we're going to talk about joint variation. What joint variation means, as one goes up, both of the other things go up. So what we'll do is we'll say y is equal to k, and it's going to be the product of these two things, a times b. So they're both going to be lo located in the numerator. So it's basically, it's direct variation together. That's what it means by joint. So again, joint variation, they're both going to be located in the numerator, multiplied by anything else in the numerator. Now we're going to look at some examples uh, of word problems that deal with this stuff.